While most of the world has collectively decided that 4K laser TVs are the way to go for projectors, some companies have thankfully not forgotten the humble LED-based projector. And if you've ever tried some twitchy gaming sessions on a laser TV, you'll know why I say thankfully. Laser TVs traditionally have horrendous input lag. You can literally count the time from pressing a button to stuff happening on the screen. But this is the BenQ X3000i, an LED-based 4K HDR gaming projector, specifically designed with low latency input in mind, as low as 16 milliseconds while still maintaining gorgeous 4K 60fps visuals. The 3000 in the name comes from the maximum brightness 3000 ANSI lumens, which is pretty insane by any home cinema standards. Of course, it's also great for enjoying movies. It retails for a very reasonable $2,000, but it's not without some misgivings. So join me, James Bruce, as I take a closer look at the BenQ X3000i gaming projector in this week's MUO review and help you decide if it's right for you. The design of the BenQ X3000i is actually quite unique. It's neither a large slab like laser TVs typically are, uh, nor is it a small rectangular box like most traditional projectors. Instead, it's almost a cube with a white wraparound case and black at the front and back. It almost looks like a comically oversized portable projector, but it's not portable, it has no battery. It measures 10.7 by 7.8 by 10.2 inches, so it's quite a chunky thing, which has allowed BenQ to fit in some halfway decent speakers. It is quite heavy, however, at around 6.5 kilograms or 14 pounds, which is substantial, but still ceiling mountable if you're brave. There are two HDMI 2.0B ports at the rear, one of which supports eARC, and interestingly, there's also another HDMI port hidden inside the X3000i, and that's specifically for use with the included BenQ streaming stick. This is something I've used with BenQ projectors before, and it means they can offer a projector with Android TV streaming facilities built in, while still giving you the option to upgrade that at a later date so as not to have outdated software. Just unscrew the two rear screws and the top of the unit will slide off, revealing a small area for the streaming stick to sit in. Now, I haven't tried this with other streaming sticks. If they're the same size and also happen to use micro USB for power, then in theory, you could use those instead. But that's not really intended. And to be honest, this one is mostly sufficient, though like the projector itself, it's not perfect. And we'll talk more about that later. Setup of the X3000i is mostly as simple as plugging in the power cable and grabbing the remote. By default, you'll be booted into the Android TV interface and you'll be prompted to insert that streaming stick if you didn't. However, you can just ignore that if you really don't want to use it. It will still operate, obviously, as an output device, just, you know, as a projector. But I've been testing it with that plugged in using Plex and YouTube mostly, uh, as well as the generic HDMI input from my gaming PC. Okay, let's talk about throw ratio and image size, because there's one major, and I'm gonna call it a flaw, that you should know about the X3000i, and that is the throw ratio. And it's going to seriously limit the size of projection that you can get, uh, or the place that you can put it. Now, I'm not saying this is a hidden specification or anything quite like that. The BenQ sales page is, is quite open about the throw ratio, but if you're not sure what it actually means, then let me explain. Some projectors, like the newest generation of laser TV, are what we call ultra short throw, or UST, meaning that they can be placed pretty much right next to the wall, and you'll still get a massive image out of it. A ratio of, say, 0.1 distance to 1.0 screen size, meaning that if you have it 10 centimeters from the wall, you'll get a 100 centimeter image. Now, just for example, then you have short throw projectors. So anything less than a ratio of about one to one would generally be considered short throw, meaning you can put it one meter from the wall and you'll get a one meter or bigger image size. Anything above a one to one ratio would be considered long throw, meaning that you will need to place it proportionally further from the wall than you want to achieve with the image size. So the X3000 and I has a throw ratio of somewhere between 1.1, 1.3 to one. And this scales proportionately, but I'll show you my actual numbers later. Now, if you have a massive distance to project from, say, in a large theater or conference hall, then long throw projectors are ideal and generally not a problem. But if you're in an old British house where rooms are rarely more than four meters wide or long, 
then the overall projection size you can get may be disappointing. In addition, the vertical offset for the X3000i is 110%, which means rather than protecting uh, straight out in front of the lens with the image starting there, uh, it's actually offset a little bit higher, so it goes up a bit uh, and then starts there. Or alternatively, if you're mounting it on the ceiling, then the top of the projected image will be a little bit lower than the height of the projector. So let me demonstrate all this with a more practical example. In my humble little home cinema here, the best I could get was to have the X3000i placed behind the sofa, and since I didn't want to drill more holes in the ceiling, I just placed it upside down on this tall shelf here. Functionally, that's the equivalent of mounting it up there uh, in terms of projection size. Now, the lens is sitting 2.6 meters from the wall, and the width of the projected image that I'm getting uh, is 2.3 meters wide. And you can see that vertical offset in action here as well. It's lower down than the actual projector is. Now, you might prefer that. It puts the image more centrally onto uh, a large wall, but it's another thing to keep in mind with your projector placement. I did originally try mounting it sort of head height on the shelf behind there, but that resulted in the image being placed partly on the ceiling. Now, for comparison's sake, I have an Optima GT1080 mounted on the ceiling too, just in front and out of frame here. It's pretty old now, I've actually had a few of the same model over the past 10 years because I like it so much. So ignoring the resolution and brightness because it isn't even remotely comparable on that front, but purely talking about projection size and throw ratio, at roughly a distance of 2.2 meters from the wall or, or basically above where we sit, I get a 3.6 meter wide image. Ta-da! Yes, that is comically large, probably too large for comfort, if I'm really honest, but you can see my point. That's the tangible difference between an ultra short throw projector and a long throw projector in a small room at roughly the same distance from the wall. Now, clearly, if you have one of those expansive American McMansions with 10 meters to project from and a three meter high ceiling, you're going to get a much larger potential image size from the X3000i. And the brightness is such that you can really go big if you want to. Now, personally, my feelings are go big or go home. If you don't want a big screen, you might as well just buy a TV instead. So don't think just about, oh, I want a 4K gaming projector. You'll also need to consider exactly where you can mount the device and how much distance you'll have to project. Then look at the promised throw ratio. It might be expressed as a single digit, in which case you might want to look at something 0.8 or lower if you're short on space. So you'll get a larger image from a shorter distance. But as I say, if you have a big room, tall ceilings, you'll be absolutely fine. Lastly, while the X3000i does have functional automatic keystoning as well as manual horizontal keystoning, you should never use it. Nothing specifically against this implementation of it, just on any projector in general, digital keystoning is going to reduce your resolution and result in distortion because you're basically distorting the image on the original screen in order to have it undistorted on the projection surface. Don't do that. You'll be wasting the image clarity and resolution and really defeating the point of a 4K projector. Okay, let's talk about specs. Inside the X3000i, you have a 0.65 inch DLP image system with a quad LED light source. And as I mentioned, 3000 lumens, and it's that use of four LEDs rather than more typically three that allows for a greater brightness. It projects at a native ratio of 16 to 9 at 3840 by 2160 pixels or 4K resolution. It covers 100% of the DCI P3 color gamut with one caveat. In order to show the full color range, you will need to en enable wide color gamut mode, which does drop the brightness considerably. For daytime use, the projector is normally fine, uh, as in today, but enabling that wide camp gamut mode would be problematic, so you'll only want to have that on at night. It supports real, actual HDR in the form of HDR Pro and HDR10, and it has virtual surround with Dolby Atmos support, as well as an eARC return audio HDMI channel for use with suitably equipped AV receivers. At this price point, it does, of course, make use of pixel shifting technology, which means it's actually a 1080p image projection that's shifted around four times really quickly to make a 4K image. And I don't say that to detract from the image quality at all. It's incredible. I just mention it because it's frequently asked in the comments and some people 
really dislike the idea of pixel shifting, but you're not going to find a non-pixel shifting 4K projector at this price point. In terms of input and output, you have, as I say, the two external HDMI 2.0B ports. Note that they are not 2.1, so no uh, 4K 120 support or VRR dynamic refresh, which might disappoint some gamers, but also isn't unexpected at this price point. There's also the internal HDMI connection, as I said specifically for the streaming stick. And there's also a USB Type-A 2.5 amp port in case you want to plug in a different powered streaming stick at the rear. 3.5mm stereo out, optical out, as well as serial in and 12 volt trigger via another 3.5mm jack. And that's for things like automated screen control. So moving on to image quality because that's really the important bit. What you do get out of the X3000i is simply incredible. Just out of the box, you shouldn't need to tweak any settings. For reference, I don't project onto a screen. My wall is chalk paint. It's white, of course, and I find it's an excellent projection surface. It doesn't produce hot spots or unwanted reflections like a silk emulsion would, but you might equally use a projection screen if that's not possible. Now, as you'd expect from a gaming projector, it is, of course, compatible with the latest generation of consoles, though I don't have one specifically to test that out. Uh, so my depth of gaming tests here comes only from PC gaming. And while I say it's supported by the latest consoles, uh, you might have seen this being marketed as a 240Hz gaming projector, which is technically true. It can go up to 240Hz, but that will cut your resolution to 1080p, so it's best ignoring that. It's not 4K 240 or even 4K 120. The 4K is limited to 60Hz, and that's why HDMI 2.1 support would be pointless. In 4K 60 the latency is around 16 milliseconds, while in 1080p 240, it can go to four milliseconds. But I don't think I'd spend $2,000 on a projector only to pay, play in 1080p. There's no variable refresh rate support either, as I said, but that's not unusual. Color reproduction is superb, and I didn't notice any rainbow effects, streaking, etc., anything like that in normal use. But if you were to go looking for a rainbow pattern when running a set of AZO monitor tests, you might find them, particularly with bright white shapes on a black background, but certainly uh, not significant and not as much as some projectors, nor of any consequence in the real world. For SDR content, you have various display modes, bright, cinema, game, living, sports, and a custom user setting. But for the most part, cinema mode looked best to me. If it detects 3D or HDR content, it will automatically swap into those color modes instead. And you should really only be using the bright setting if you genuinely need it in the daytime. I mean, it's far too bright to say watch a movie at night. It's absolutely blinding. Cinema and various other game modes, even HDR, all drop the brightness to about half of that. Further, if you enable wide color gamut mode, it'll drop the brightness down again. Now, personally, I'm not too bothered by black levels, especially not in a gaming projector, but if you are gonna watch in a very dark environment and black levels are something you're particularly sensitive to, then you may find them to be a little bit too gray on this device. It's more obvious in sci-fi movies with lots of space scenes, and that's the only real negative point about the image from the X3000i. The image is great, but the black levels are not comparable to something you'd find on a $2,000 TV, for instance. Let's briefly talk about the BenQ uh, QS01 Android TV streaming stick that's also included and kind of built in, but also not. It does integrate deeply with the projector, so you can access all the various projector settings from that one remote, uh, as well as the Android TV stuff. So no surprises there, and performance is great. I was able to stream and decode 4K content just fine from Plex. The projector automatically switched to HDR, etc., when needed, uh, and the switching is actually really quick, which is something that frustrated me before on the last BenQ projector I reviewed. It could take up to sort of 10 seconds to switch between modes, but that all integrates nicely. The only major downside to the BenQ branded streaming stick is that not all apps are supported. Now, in fairness, this is more on the app developers than BenQ to sort out, but it's uh, not, for instance, licensed for BBC iPlayer. Netflix or all four, you just can't install them. As a sort of solution to that, Chromecast works perfectly, so any content you can get on your phone can be cast onto here. So there are workarounds, but you may prefer to just buy an official Chromecast or Roku stick anyway, if your favorite apps are not supported. Okay, so I mentioned BenQ has fit some big speakers in there. 
uh, a 5 watt Trivolo speaker system to be exact with virtual surround Dolby Atmos support. It gets reasonably loud and can sound good, but I'll add the caveat of only when comparing to other projectors. On top of that, it's not nearly as good if the projector is behind you because a lot of that sound is coming from the rear of the projector. So if you have it set up like I did, you lose out on that. It reflects back from the rear wall, which kind of muddies it a little. So yes, for a projector, the sound quality is good if you sit behind it. But ultimately, like most projectors, it doesn't compare in the slightest to even the most budget of surround sound setups. I think mine was about $500 for a basic 5.1 setup, and it is infinitely better. Even a budget soundbar is going to sound better than this. If you're doing an outdoor movie night and you're struggling to get a decent PA system set up, then it, the sound will be sufficient. I happily watched entire movies using that for the purposes of testing, but I'm not going to lie and say I was blown away by the audio. I certainly wasn't. It's not horrendous either, but if you're spending $2,000 on a 4K HDR projector, then even if you're not an audiophile, you would be insane to skimp out on the sound and use the built-in speakers. So for me, it's a weird thing to include or boast about, really. It makes sense on a portable device to have speakers like this, but I just don't understand why it would be a special thing on a static living room installation. Okay, now we get on to the big question. Should you buy the BenQ X3000i? Is it right for you? In terms of image quality and latency for gaming, the X3000i has seriously impressed me. We've been using it for both twitchy Minecraft dungeons sort of stuff, as well as more relaxed gaming sessions uh, and watching movies on it. The black levels aren't perfect, but I think unless you're coming from a high-end TV or downgrading for some reason from a high-end cinema projector, uh, you won't necessarily see it as a downgrade or pick up on it that much at all. While the audio for me does leave a lot desired, the overall package seems like great value for money with a lot of gaming features for the price. It does, however, lack some higher end gaming features such as VRR and 4K 120 input, but that's not unexpected at this price point or for projectors in general, those would be unusual. But what does disappoint me is the extreme throw distance required and somewhat awkward vertical offset which ultimately means for my situation, it would be difficult to project a screen that's much bigger than say a $500 4K TV. So if like me, you have a very small space for gaming or watching movies, I don't think this will be the right choice for you. You will need a big distance to project over and you'll need high ceilings to ensure that you can get the image uh, centrally on your screen or wall. Instead, you'll want to look for something that's ultra or just short throw, but don't jump straight to laser TVs because as I say, the latency there with regards to gaming is usually terrible. All right, that's it from me. Thanks to BenQ for sending this over for review and thanks to you for watching. I hope I've told you what you need to know about the BenQ X3000i. If not, then please head down to the comments and let me know why. Uh, if I have told you everything you need to know, then hit like, I'd really appreciate that. Consider subscribing for all the latest reviews and more from all of us at makeusoft.com. Until next time.